the honey badger, nature's cockiest, scrappiest, most badass animal that really don't care. Say it with me, honey badger don't care. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault and you're watching Animal Logic. The honey badger, or radle, is a member of the Mustelidae family with 12 recognized subspecies native to Africa, India, and Southwest Asia. You may have heard that they hold the Guinness World Record for most fearless animal. They don't, but they probably should. Honey badgers, fully grown, measure around a meter long, including their tail. Males are larger, weighing up to 15 kilos, and females are smaller, weighing up to 10 kilos. However, in some parts of Asia, mainly Iraq, the females can be much larger, weighing up to 18 kilos. Honey badgers are incredibly adaptable and will live anywhere that they can find shelter and burrow, or in some cases, appropriate burrows. They've been documented living in both aardvark and hog burrows. Despite what their name might have you believe, they're anatomically closer to weasels than they are to other species of badger. You might say that they're weasels on steroids. The honey part of their name comes from a supposed mutualistic relationship they have with the honey guide bird. Honey guide birds, as you may have guessed, are very good at finding beehives, but they lack the power needed to break into them. This is where the honey badger comes in. Honey guides will sing their distinctive song to alert a nearby honey badger as to the location of a beehive. The honey badger will then crack open the beehive and feast on the bee larvae found in the honey. When the honey badger has had its fill, the honey guide will polish off the remains. Unfortunately, as cute and as romantic as this sounds, there's no actual evidence of this happening in the wild. There are a few videos demonstrating this behavior, but it's likely that they're using stuffed birds. Honey badgers have both poor vision and hearing, so a bird guide wouldn't be particularly effective. As well, studies have found that playing the honey guide song next to a beehive in the presence of a honey badger elicits no reaction. Not to mention that honey badgers are primarily nocturnal, while honey guides are diurnal. Sadly, the story is likely just folklore. Honey badgers are short and stocky and probably have the cockiest walk in the animal kingdom. Their skin is both very thick and incredibly loose, which allows them to withstand attacks and continue to move if another animal is biting them. Their skin is so thick that bee stings, porcupine quills, arrows, and bites from larger predators don't often pierce it. Their vulnerabilities, so their eyes, ears, and tail, are all very small as to reduce exposure to attack. They have very strong bites with enough jaw strength to crack open a small tortoise. Yet probably their most distinctive feature are their long claws. These can reach 35 millimeters in length and they use them for digging, be it burrows or finding dinner. They will dig out a burrow that is about three meters long to sleep in and can dig a hole the size of their body in a matter of minutes. Their diet is vastly varied and is made up of at least 59 different species, including bee larvae, pythons, lizards, geckos, king cobras, and gerbils. <laughs> Why not? They dig up the majority of their prey, but will often climb up to eat nested chicks. Goshawks and jackals are a particular problem for the honey badger. They'll wait for the honey badger to do all the work, flushing the prey out of hiding, and then they'll swoop in to catch it before the honey badger can react. To balance the scales, honey badgers will regularly eat goshawk chicks and jackal young. Up to 25% of their diet is made up of venomous snakes, and they're able to maintain that diet because they're immune to many different snake venoms. But why not just avoid the snakes in the first place like the rest of us? Well, if you're the only animal around who can take a bite, you'll have an entire species of prey to yourself. Snake venom is very complicated, containing over a hundred proteins and other molecules that can attack your system in a multitude of different ways. Like the alpha neurotoxins found in cobra venom, these sit in your muscle cells' nicotinic acetylcholine receptor, preventing them from receiving signals from the nervous system and shutting down your ability to breathe. Yet honey badgers have mutated their receptors to defend against this neurotoxin, stopping it from taking effect. So they'll take the bite, kill the snake, pass out, wake up, eat the snake, aka a fun afternoon. 
Honey badgers can pose a problem for humans. They'll break into chicken coops and animal enclosures and then go to town with all the killing. Like other mustelids, they've been documented exhibiting surplus killing, killing far more than they need to eat. This is a huge problem for farmers, especially since they are possibly the cockiest animal on the planet, and therefore are almost impossible to shoo away. It also doesn't help that honey badgers are very smart and are one of the few mammals who've learned to use tools. Many have learned to open gates, to roll logs to stand on to better access prey, and they regularly escape from zoos. In case you thought that these guys didn't have enough going for them yet, there's one thing I haven't mentioned. A reversible anal pouch. It's about as fun as it sounds. When threatened, they can push this pouch out of their anus, and the smell is so bad that it will frighten off most predators. It reportedly smells so terrible, it's believed that they use it to tranquilize bees when looking for larvae to eat. Badgers are relatives of skunks, and this ability is very similar to skunk spray. They just don't shoot anything out. Sorry if you are eating. <laughs> Honey badgers gestate for between six and eight weeks for a single cub and will bear cubs throughout the year. Outside of the mating season, honey badgers are generally solitary. Occasionally, they will spend time with their mate, but typically, encounters with other honey badgers are very violent and don't end well. In order to avoid socializing at all costs, honey badgers have developed a sophisticated system of chemical communication, which involves spreading urine, feces, and skin secretions in conspicuous places for other honey badgers to find. Fellow introverts, take note. Despite being totally badass, the honey badger isn't impervious, and their body parts, particularly their paws, skin, fat, and organs, are all used in traditional medicines. This is due to their reputation of being fearless and, well, badass. Their meat has also been found on the bushmeat market in Zambia and Guinea because of the decline in other more favored bushmeat species. Yet, as you know, the honey badger really doesn't give a shit. But we should. So what animals should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every other week. If you'd like to get episodes early and some exclusive new content, I'd be very appreciative if you'd support me on Patreon. Thanks for watching! Hi, I'm Din- Who am I? Oh god. He's so nasty. Oh, look at him. He's just, he's just.